Now tuning in to Earbud Media, audio for everyone. I don't know that you're properly equipped and like settled that you have like prepared your chakras for the amount of shit that I'm about to release to you today. I am no, I know I'm not ready. I just know. I woke up yesterday, Cody. It was like God had told me, Allie, (laughs) you're about to go and do my work today. (laughs) <laughs> and, and I did the damn thing, Cody. And I went to Forks, and it was worse than I remembered. <laughs> so, please tell me every second. Welcome to Into the Twilight, folks, where I forgot how bad Twilight was. <laughs> we're doing some... This is the fucking investigative fucking reporting that we're doing. Allie's out here doing field work. Like, we're fucking out here... For you fuckers. <laughs> and and here's the thing. I I Snapchatted Cody a couple days ago with a weather mm-hmm. report of Forks. Um, and just, like, no other information. Just, like, hey, guess who's planning a road trip? And got nothing back, as usual. <laughs> like, it's not... I don't think I really took that in. <laughs> because it was just a weather report. Like, I gave no other information about it being Forks. Just, like, other than in the top like search bar it said forks so like i don't think cody realized what was happening <laughs> i don't think i did um and then the, like the next day i went and so yesterday everyone i went to forks and i went to la push to cope with the fact that one of my favorite podcasts was um ending sort of because that's <laughs> hi i'm a gemini and i can't deal <laughs> with things so hmm, <laughs> i i have been to forks before i think i mentioned this in like one of our earlier episodes mm-hmm. and when i've been before i've merely been as just a like I'm going to go somewhere far away for the day. But this time, it was an investigative time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I I did some more kind of touristy things. And here's the thing. I was going as merely an observer of those things. Whereas sure. the folks who were going, who were also at those spaces, were very much there as fans and, like, consuming that content. And mm-hmm. so I did not talk to people like I I was nice of (laughs) course because hi it's me but I was not like engaging in the content right and mm, Cody mm, uh, so the first thing that you get when you enter Forks is the Chamber of Commerce which is very normal when you enter kind of smallish towns sure and in that little turn off because it is just like a turn off (laughs) on this road (laughs) is you get two trucks that are supposed to be Bella's trucks. One that looks exactly like her her truck, and the other mm-hmm. that is nicer and actually has Bella's plates on there, which I sent you and is also on our Patreon as well. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> it was <laughs> the, the busiest I've ever seen a Chamber of Commerce mm-hmm. be. The only reason why I could figure this out is because of the eclipse. Now, I should Mm -hmm. mention, happy eclipse, because this is going up on the solar eclipse. So, hi, branding. Please close your eyes, stay inside. (laughs) Don't buy those, like, $2 eBay eclipse glasses. Don't fuck with it. Um, We're just on brand, as on brand as we could ever be. Hello. So I walk in, and as I'm opening the door, there are Twilight posters on the window. So, like, I'm here. (laughs) I'm, like, in it. (laughs) And the first thing I see when I walk in the door on the end of like at the back of this little building and it's not big it's Mm -hmm. like the size of like a glorified bedroom (laughs) like it's not it's not big is three cutouts of taylor lautner and kristen stewart and robert pattinson Mm -hmm. and i just need to say i'm so sorry to this fantastic 
man who was working this chamber of commerce who knew so much about forks and knew so much about the twilight saga and has to deal with these people coming into his town every day Mm -hmm. and just and just like freaking out (laughs) about Uh twilight and he was so kind i would say he was maybe 21 maybe 20 like young i was assuming like an old man has lived here his whole life (laughs) so forks like he did so his boss was an older woman Uh who was okay who had like lived in forks Mm -hmm. her whole life (laughs) um okay but no this guy was young so okay this we need to interview these people for our podcast please next time we're doing it (laughs) the place was packed y'all there was twilight merch every like it was like hanging down from the ceiling basically (laughs) Uh, it wasn't (laughs) because that would be a fire hazard but like there was there was thank you stephanie merch there were there were twilight water bottles there were twilight stickers there was (laughs) please write where you're from so that we can pin it on the wall there were twilight movie posters there like it was everywhere and i'm telling you it's the size of a bedroom like it's not big Mm -hmm. this poor guy is like asking people where they're from there was a van of women white women (laughs) who two two women and their teenage daughters who came in and they're losing their goddamn minds like they're in it and they're taking pictures with the things and they're taking pictures Mm -hmm. of the posters they're freaking out and so this lovely guy is telling them all about where to go in Forks and do your self-led tours. Like, he's in it. Mm -hmm. And these women, they're losing it. They're, and I'm shutting up, right? I'm not saying a thing. I've been nice and I said hello, Uh but I'm, I'm, I, I'm so close to turning on my microphone and just, like, going, (laughs) I'm, like, in my old school journalism, like, communications mode, right? Uh, (laughs) But I want to respect their privacy, (laughs) like, uh, but I'm, like, there. So, He's telling them everything. And one of the things that, like, piques my interest is they're talking about Jacob and, like, the bulls. And I'm just like, mm. <laughs> But one of the things that the, the employee says is he's talking about the movies and if there's going to be more. And he says that Stephanie Meyer came to Forks three years ago. And mm. one of the police force asked Stephanie are there going to be any more movies? And apparently he said it like in that intonation. And Stephanie said that she couldn't confirm that. And it's like, of course, right? Because right. Like she's a vague motherfucker. Well, and like she wants that money, money. Um, hello. But I was amazed by this whole thing, like this whole culture that's there. And this group of, the women were also from Portland. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how did this happen on the same day? Anyway, I did get a purchase there of some postcards and stuff. So, hi, if you want those, help our Patreon. So, I leave. Ding. And I take some photos because, hi, it's Bella's truck. And I have to do my due <laughs> diligence. So, I go to First Beach. And one of the things that I hadn't noticed when I'd gone there before is it takes 15 minutes from Forks to get to La Push. Now, mm. on the way there, you have to enter the reservation. One of the things I mm. had not noticed in the year, almost two years that I'd been there last time, is they do make a point of noting the treaty line. Now, when they do that, oh no, there is a sign and it's painted and it says treaty line. However, <laughs> on that sign, it also says no vampires passed <sighs> here. Quill you treaty line. Oh, God. They can't have one sign for themselves, y'all. So, not a goddamn sign. So that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> that, oh, my God. So I screamed and kept driving. And, um, <laughs> and that's, you know, I, I will save the rest, you know, for another date. But those were some of the some of the highlights i my favorite is i i resonate most with the the policeman 
person <laughs> who was just like, please God, like, <laughs> like, please just let us live. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, it was a great time. And I, every time I go, it's always sunny there. So I don't know what that means. But you know, yeah, fucking fake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's just so much fake vampire teeth and so much Stephanie stuff. Like, oh, no. yeah. Uh, but yeah, well, I'm glad you made it through. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Speaking of conspiracy theories and Twilight stuff. Oh, my God. Do you want to talk about this link that we were sent? Ah, God. So, from the podcast, sent us a, a a Pop Sugar article about, what's her name? Nikki, yep. who plays Rosalie in the movies. Yep. And Ian Somerhalder had a baby, which we talked about last episode. However, there is an article, and I use the term article very loosely. I wrote this, basically. <laughs> because I think there's maybe 50 to 80 words in this entire thing. Yeah, it's a drabble. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it is a giant photo of Nikki Reed and Ian Somerhalder, and then also 50 words of text. <laughs> Ian looks blazed. <laughs> right, yeah, oh, absolutely. It's fine. But, um, it's like that Charlie Day picture <laughs> where he's kind of like, he's got a whole wall of things with like, connections, and he's like, there's something here. Yep. And that's this with Pop Sugar, because they're saying that they're, the name of their child, which is Bahi, I don't even, Bahi Soleil? Solil? Yeah, Cirque du Soleil, I'm pretty sure, like, it's not... Oh, fuck. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's mean. <laughs> like, it's, that's an actual child, but, like, I don't... It's a human being! I don't know how to say it, and I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> uh, so this name dick move. <laughs> apparently translates to an awakening sun, and so Popshirk was like, oh, I got it, it's a Twilight reference. And then they also said that Nikki <laughs> found out she was pregnant... <laughs> because she took a test before dawn. This, I fucking then wrote that's, this. <laughs> that's the whole, it's the whole article. Like this sentence, the connections are not lost on us. Awakening sun, before dawn. And hey, Nikki also starred in Twilight Breaking Dawn. Like I wrote this. <laughs> I, I can't believe. <laughs> Same, Brittany Stevens. And then the last sentence is like, oh, also see some stars who became fathers this year. <laughs> I hyperlink. <laughs> like this, there's, I swan to John, there's like maybe 80 words in this, and most of them are hyperlinks. Like, it's not, yeah. like, oh my god. Or everything has an exclamation point <laughs> after it, I, just after two words. I wrote this article at 2 a.m. Like, it's not, oh my god. <laughs> I don't work for Pop Sugar, but if this is what it takes, like, <laughs> like shoot me a DM. <laughs> like, oh my god. Uh, okay, so, Cody. Yeah. I've told you throughout the past, fuck, how long have we been on this? Uh, months? Ugh. We've been on Eclipse now for months. I've told you for the past 10 episodes now that we've been on Eclipse mm-hmm. how much I I hate Eclipse. And that yep. there are so many reasons for that. However, mm-hmm. these two chapters of 21 and 22, Trials and Fire and Ice, are... Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I hate. Yep, that about eclipse. does it. And also, I would say for the majority of Twihards, I can't believe I just. Um, <laughs> for the majority of the, I have to like burn sage <laughs> on the podcast just to cleanse it. For the majority of the fandom, I would say this is a a reason why as well. Oh, interesting. Be- it's not like a well revered like bunch huh? well particularly chapter two which we'll get to you know right this is why because it's just uh, like it's just the most <laughs> so chapter 21 is as we know with stephanie kind of a filler chapter yeah it's kind of rearing up to what we're going to be getting to in fire and ice which kind of goes along with the epigraph at the beginning of the novel which god (laughs) like uh, in case you forgot yeah it's so much so chapter 21 of trials we kind of leave off with after the engagement Uh, i'm gonna stop you right now it's definitely trails (laughs) oh fuck me where are we who am i like this eclipse (laughs) is like already fucking with me (laughs) um (laughs) why do i have it oh fuck me that's why our i have it spelled wrong on our google doc that's why trails. Damn. 
Where am I? <laughs> okay, so trails. God. <laughs> Mercury retrograde coming out for me. We just left off with the fucking engagement. Bullshit. Yeah. So, yeah, same. And Bella is thoroughly unamused. Like, she's touched and had the ring on her hand once and she's already like oh god my hand no. like <laughs> it's like 40 pounds fuck yeah yeah she's already just like unamused which like same <laughs> um i'll never get this hand back <laughs> yeah i she gets it I this already. is my favorite hand <laughs> yeah <laughs> and she's thinking about the kind of elopement a little bit more and mm. she's like you know what I don't even want to wear jeans. Fuck this. I'm going to wear old sweats. And it's like, damn, mood. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's such a Virgo. Like, I'm going to do comfort all the way. This is going to be fine. It's going to be like 15 minutes, right? Like, I could do this. We'll just, this, like, <laughs> book two flights. <laughs> this made me laugh a lot because I have one of the very few weddings I've been to, one of which was a Vegas wedding, specifically an Elvis wedding. And Vegas weddings are very an intuitive process and very an interactive sort of thing, especially if it's an Elvis wedding. And I just Real. like the idea of, like, Bella being like, oh, it's going to be super chill. We'll just go to the courthouse. It'll be great. And she just gets bombarded with, like, a singing Elvis man who's also reading their vows and is also, oh like, my giving God. them a ring and her being absolutely mortified. <laughs> See, I'm imagining, and I know this is more, like, our time and not... Right. when this was happening but you know how taco bell allows weddings oh now God. in vegas that's oh what i'm God. imagining it's just like low-key not like taco bell's trashy because like first of all hey um <laughs> but like the trashiest kind of wedding that like right. edward would be unamused by kind of mm -hmm. thing but yeah i that would be i'm first of all so intrigued by the fact that you've been to a vegas wedding yep, <laughs> like, yeah yeah i was like probably eight or nine too like i was very young what a formative experience honestly I, it really made me who i am today <laughs> that's i need everything um i'm <laughs> very curious we need to stop the podcast and i need to hear this story <laughs> But, uh, uh, hey, circle back to this Taco Bell idea. Instead of, like, the hot sauce packets, does Edward get, like, his own, and all the vampires get ones that are just, like, little blood? Um, I know <laughs> that I cannot react in the same way that I usually do when we're talking of just, like, staying quiet, but just please know <laughs> that I'm giving you the response of absolute <laughs> silence right now. <laughs> but, like, okay, imagine that I was actually going on this idea with you that Edward was the one carrying the bouquet because you know that this motherfucker would want oh, the bouquet. Absolutely. And he would have a bouquet of hot sauce packets, like the Taco Bell sauce packets, oh. and they would have the little, like, notes on them still, like, congrats, you're yeah. doing the thing, you're getting fucked tonight. Um, <laughs> you're getting that good D, finally. Um, and they all are, like, the little different sauces, and he has them, like, shaped into a little bouquet. Oh, my God. Yeah, because you it. know he would be the one, like, walking up the altar. Like, mm -hmm. that's so... Oh, my God. He's such a blushing bride. It's so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> okay, that's... I need art now. Um, <laughs> okay, so, anyway, um, they are still at the house alone. And so when the Colons get back, Alice is pissed. And Bella doesn't really know why yet, but she will. <laughs> uh <laughs> So they're talking about the plans for later on, and she finds out the weather forecast. <laughs> she doesn't turn on the TV. She just, like, gets it from everybody else. And, and so when Bella says, ew, snow, <laughs> it's same. Mm -hmm. um, because, hi, do you all remember that good old throwback of me being stuck in my house oh, with the snow? Um, uh, because same. dark but, times. Th very dark times um however bella is justified in saying that because it's june so yeah that's fair so then we get to the gross part of this chapter the first gross part of this chapter i would say when alice and edward are having a conversation with their eyes as they do mm -hmm. and alice decides to kind of whisk bella away for a conversation. Now, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, here's the thing. Alice is doing her version of puppy eyes and Bella being who she is and being concerned for and protective of the people around her is very concerned. Then we get Alice saying, don't you love me? <sighs> now, as we know and have talked about in length, 
about yep. Bella. She has trauma with a capital T. Yep. <laughs> and abandonment issues with a capital A. Mm. So when we get information and words said to Bella like this and said in a voice and tone like this, mm-hmm. when it's manipulating her emotions, <laughs> this is going to send Bella into a spiral. <laughs> So, the the reason, of course, why Alice is doing this is because she has seen a vision of Bella and Edward sneaking off to Vegas to get married without her. Now, <laughs> instead of Alice communicating that in a way that would register to Bella and just be like, hey, so that's not cool with me. Can we work out a way that it works for both of us? Instead, Alice says, how much do you love me, Bella? No. <laughs> uh, and like this is the same fucking excuse that everyone uses at Bella to like get what they want. And it's I'm over it. I'm over yeah. it. Now, it's important to hold her to the same standard that we've held to Jacob and to Edward because they've done this to her too. Absolutely. So, not cool, first of all. <laughs> sure. Um because here's the thing. An out Al- Alice knows better than this. <laughs> like, yeah. they're supposed to be best friends, like sisters. She should know better than this, and she does know better than this. And so when Bella's like, listen, I, no. <laughs> like, because <laughs> Alice is like, let me do your wedding. And, and Bella's like, hey, no, stop. <laughs> like, yeah, no. <laughs> no. And then, of course, Alice has to be like, well, if you really, truly love me, Bella. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Stop. So, of course, Bella kind of gives in because she knows how much this means to Alice. And it's like, listen, <laughs> I, that's not cool. And it's manipulative and it's gross. Now, there is a part of this that I think Bella kind of understands where she maybe doesn't understand in the moment, but she will kind of understand that she does kind of want to maybe experience it with Charlie right. and maybe experience it with Renee. However, I still think that Bella is definitely the kind of person that would want it to be small and intimate. Mm-hmm. And she knows Alice and she knows that it's not going to be small and intimate no. with Alice. And so like, this is definitely one of those things where it's like, we need to do a, a green, yellow, red conversation here. Yep. And, and that's definitely not going to happen. So it ends up being one of those things where it's like, it just sucks that this happens. And once again, someone's like, oh man, I love compromise. And then never, never makes a compromise. Right, exactly. Anyway, this conversation ends basically. And she goes back to Edward. And (laughs) there's a part where Bella in her like narrative voice says, I repressed a sigh. And it's like, same. (laughs) Like, (laughs) 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 that's a mood if I've ever read one. (laughs) There is a part though where... Edward says, well, even if she does get her way, we can just keep it small, just us, and it can get a clerical license off the internet. And can we just, for a minute... I love it. Can you imagine how funky fresh that wedding would be? Like, can you imagine him? Because I know that Emmett, like, especially with Rosalie around, he knows how to dress up well. But But you know, just to irritate Edward, he would not. Like, he would have some sort of, he would wear one of those t-shirts that has the suit on it. Like, he would just try to make it fun and do something to make Bella laugh because right. he knows how to keep her calm. Mm. Uh, I just, I love that idea so much. Now, hear me out. Vegas wedding, but Emma is the officiator and he is yes! just as Elvis. <laughs> just, like, oh. singing down. I love that so much. And Rosalie's just, like, in the back. Like, she's there. But she's, like, in the back of the church just, like, fuck me. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, Silly boy. But she's, like, still taking pictures, you know? Like, <laughs> she's, like, not in it, but she's, like, still sort of in it. <laughs> like, I love that. I love that so much. Ugh, okay. So, anyway, star wipe. And <laughs> then, like, we get <laughs> to this... <laughs> We get to this part where they're in the forest now. And, of course, Bella dies. And I say that because Bella trips on herself and (laughs) basically almost bashes her head in, but instead just, like, cuts her hand open. Not her broken hand, but her other hand. So she's just, like, properly uh, hurt on both sides now. Just really. (laughs) Yeah. Um... (laughs) And my favorite thing about this is when she when that happened, she's like, ouch, oh, fabulous. <laughs> just like, 
<laughs> her saying that in just like a monotone voice is just Bella in a nutshell. <laughs> like, Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, of course, she gets the idea of, like, oh, I could clean this, or I could just drapes my blood all over the forest. <laughs> and it's like, well, smart, but also not good for your body. No. <laughs> but it's just, I don't know, thinking about Bella, and we've kind of kept this sort of note document of Bella in her Ocean's 8 kind of mind. And this is one of those moments where it's like in the moment, she's very inventive. And so I just feel like it's important to note those kinds of things, especially when she says like, Jasper will love this. Right. <laughs> um, but Edward is just like hands on his forehead, just like, God damn it. Like, like you're so just breakable. <laughs> yeah. And he's so just, easy to cut and spew blood. Yeah, and he's just like, you're literally going overboard. Like, can you please just (laughs) stop? We do get a brief moment where Edward talks about that he doesn't care about her scent anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, sort of important, I guess. It's kind of like a huge character development that's happening. Yeah. (laughs) Mainly because of the fact that he says he lived through an entire 24 hours thinking she was dead. And so that sort of changed (sighs) the way that he... uh, looks at things. That'll fucking do it, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Change your whole perspective on things. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, enter Jacob, stage fuckface. I don't like stage I don't (laughs) know. Great. Um, Stage fuckface. (laughs) My favorite thing is, so they're in the forest, right? And Edward has the audacity to pull out a map to Jacob, like, Jacob, the yeah. wolf man, right. who knows these forests so well. And he's like, so here's the spot that we want to go. And Jacob effectively, like, throws the map to the ground. He's like, you want to what? <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I know the, like, these are my home. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. So anyway, we have to go through this moment of Jacob carrying Bella because this is supposed to mask her scent, right? Mm -hmm. And I still don't get this because I understand effectively, like, she's not touching the ground, right? So that's going to mask her scent. But, like, does that... (laughs) I don't know. I don't understand science sometimes because isn't her DNA going to still come off of her? Don't you, like, lose skin cells anyway? Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to think too hard about plan but it's fine okay so basically this scene is just stephanie wanting to get through plot points right Mm. and she wants bella and jacob to like talk but (laughs) she just wants them to be in close proximity with each other Mm. and so she just has them literally in close proximity with each other like it's just gross i hate this this is another One of those times where Stephanie has, like, good intentions for plot points, but Mm -hmm. just, like, completely drops the fucking ball. Like, it's just so bad. Because, like, it starts off okay when Jacob's like, what's up, Bella? And she's just like, like, same old, same old. (laughs) Yeah. And he's just Just like, Checking in like a friend. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, bunch of vampires trying to kill you. You know, the usual. (laughs) Like, it's, these are. the fact that she was also like, yep, the usual, you know. (laughs) Yeah, these are our buds. These are the yeah. part, this is the first part of New Moon. These are the, these are the two that we have become accustomed to. Mm-hmm. But then it, like, fucking drops off. In, like, really two quick. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a big dip. Yeah. We do get, really quickly, um, Bella realizing that that crystal heart that she has on her bracelet. Mm-hmm. It's diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> she pricey. And, She's, uh... Yeah. She thick. And <sighs> Bella didn't quite connect that at the time. So Jacob kind of mentions, and he's like, a rock figures. And Bella's like, a rock? Wait a, wait a fuck. And it's... <laughs> She's shook. So earlier on, when Alice had been having that conversation with Bella, Alice had been saying, like, quote, he's already got one on you because Alice had looked down and not seen the ring on Bella's finger. Mm -hmm. And had been kind of shook about that. And so 
Bella's like, wait a fuck, like, and... <laughs> Hold the fuck up. <laughs> and so she looks down at the, the crystal heart and is like, this has to be, like, five carats or something. That's not... He said this was a hand-me-down. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I know. And so she's pissed, <laughs> as Bella usually is. And so we get into, very quickly, this very gross conversation that Jacob and Bella start having as has been kind of the common theme between these two. So it starts off with him being like, so, been a while since you came down to La Push. It's like, oh, okay. Well, the body language that Bella starts describing with Jacob makes me personally very uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, and Like, the fact that they're facing each other, but also, like, so very close. Yeah, because he's, like, carrying her, kind right. of. How does it usually mention kind of like firefighter style or whatever? Like you a, would think they would do like a piggyback situation or yeah. like something. It's yeah, kind of weird to be like, cool, I'm going to lift you and yeah. just kind of like be staring into your eyes for like the next hour that we're walking. Is that yeah, cool? he's he's basically holding her like a baby, yeah. but like <laughs> running with her. Bella is in a Bjorn right now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the Bella Bjorn. It's the new fashion <laughs> style. <laughs> Hi, Shark Tank. I have a couple of ideas. What? You didn't know about the Bella Bjorn? It's just Ikea's new thing for fall 2017. Oh How did God. you not? Their um, fall collection is very Twilight themed for no reason at all. <laughs> It's. It was kind of supposed to start off as like the solar eclipse, but it kind of diverted a yeah. little. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, Fork Sweden. It's. <laughs> <that's favorite. laughs> it was this Stephanie Meyer integration, like you know, it's oh, just like, a little collabo. <laughs> with Stephanie Meyer. Fuck! I hate this. A um, fickle fish. Oh my god! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Oh, God, even saying those words just gave me the weirdest chill down my spine. It's just a bad name. <laughs> it's like negative asthma for me. Like It's, not... <laughs> it's the opposite of asthma. <laughs> it's eight to the asthma degree. Like, it's oh not... Oh, my God. Throwback to things that people have no idea about. <laughs> like, um, so, this... So, the descriptions that she's mentioning here about the body language, like she's saying quote like with his two warm arms wrapped tightly around me and nothing at all I could do about it and it's like mm. <laughs> uh and then she's saying like I wish I could take a step back and it's like no fucking shit like yeah same <laughs> and then of course Jacob's insecurities and trying to remember that he's like a baby still right? right coming out because we get into this conversation about kissing right and he's like does that mean he's a better kisser than I am and it's like Mm. Now, it is important in this scene that Bella reminds him that Jacob and Bella did not kiss. Because she says, Mm -hmm. and she says to him, but I don't count that as a kiss, Jacob. I think of it more as an assault. And it's like, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And and Jacob's response, like, no, Jacob. (laughs) Because uh, um, <laughs> he says like, <laughs> <"Jack off." laughs> me always. Um, I, I when I wanted like if there hadn't been like twenty other cars out on the beach yesterday, I just wanted to be like scream it, <laughs> like I just <laughs> just like burn some stage and just like scream his name. Um, but he's like, ouch, that's cold. And she's, sh- like, I love that it just says, like, I shrugged. I wasn't going to take it back. And it's like, mm-hmm. God bless, Bella. Like, yes. Stand in your truth. Yeah, I don't. And so here's the thing. The, the main plot point of this scene, right, is when J- when Jacob says, how do you know that's what you want? Shouldn't you play the field a little? Like, what he's trying to say is, <sighs> as, he, as he said last time, when he kissed her without her consent is you have been with this person like this is your first real relationship are you sure you want to marry this person without exploring other options right fair point fair enough terrible execution absolutely but her next response is i kept my voice cool i know exactly what i want and so it's like conversation done jacob yeah jack up like leave it shut up (laughs) yeah it's over get over it (laughs) yeah I do love it, though, when she says, like, don't hold your breath, Jake. No, wait, actually, I changed my mind. Go right ahead. Just hold your breath until I ask you to kiss me. 
Like, bitch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, mood. <laughs> uh, but he keeps yeah. doing all this patronizing stuff. It's like, yeah, well, you're being, like, a little moody. Or, like, you're, you know, you're a little bit in a bad mood. Ooh. And you're like, shut Ugh. up, Jacob. Well, and he starts being so emotional about it, too, because he... He starts being like, well, why does it matter to you if something happens to me in this fight? And it's just like, she even tells him too. She's like, don't say that. Like, you know how much you mean to me. I'm sorry if it's not in the way you want, but that's just how it is. And it's like, yes, Bella. Like, Like, yes. Oh, I don't have any romantic feelings for you. I don't have any feelings for you, actually. Like, not at all. Like, we were best friends for like a year. And you were all that I talked to and was my only confidant or whatever. But yeah. You know, actually, I don't give a fuck if you, you die or not in that thing. Actually, actually. Ugh. Yeah, you're totally right, Jacob. Totally oh, right. God. Jacob, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> um, we do get some more information about his backstory, though, with the Quileute lineage. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he starts talking about how he was supposed to be the alpha of the pack, which is cool, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the one thing that I wanted to mention about that, though, is so he didn't want to be chief. And the thing that I thought was interesting is the parallels that that draws between him and Edward, um, mm. especially when he says, but at first it was sort of, it sort of felt like being drafted into a war you didn't know existed. And that reminded me of when Edward was describing the world war Mm -hmm. and how he was like yes get me in there (laughs) like this is what i want to do yes yes this is all i've wanted and you would think that it would be the opposite with those two yeah but it's not and so i don't know i just thought that that was an interesting tidbit that she included with him especially when (laughs) bella's like chief jacob and she just smiles and he just rolls his eyes like that's my friend that's the friendship between those two that we know and yet, here's all this fuckery that gets put in between them. But yeah, the the chapter just ends with Edward there, because they get to the campsite, and Jacob, like, looks up the sky, and he's like, shit's about to go down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Boy, boy. <sighs> Cody, I don't want to talk about chapter 22. You know what? Fuck it. Right? That's just not. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so bad. Uh, Fire and ice is so bad. Yep. It's like, I literally think, let me double check. Yeah, I, the first thing I wrote in our notes for chapter 22 is I wrote, Stephanie fell asleep writing this chapter. (laughs) So, and I stand by that. Y'all, I, this chapter, I, I can't even put into words like it's it's kind of what you would expect a fan fiction to be. Yeah, it's because it's also like the one time where we get to see like a conversation that doesn't really involve Bella, but because she's there and like semi-conscious, we can like hear what other people have to think about her without being like, I'm critiquing this from my own narrative perspective. Yeah. How can you? Thank you, Stephanie. (laughs) I'm really intrigued how you feel about uh, Stephanie's choice for showcasing um, Bella's hypothermia. Oh, my God. <laughs> because as I was rereading this, I was like, Cody's going to be pissed. <laughs> like, I can't even fathom how they would do it in the audiobook version. Because, like, oh, you don't even. I don't. Ily- Iliana Kadushin must have been. Thoroughly unamused. She was method acting. She was very cold in her, <laughs> in her boot. Oh my god. So it's fucking cold as shit. And Bella's yeah. like literally dying. And every fucking thing she says in this chapter, which is like 20 pages. Mm-hmm. Every consonant is just like that consonant and a dash. And that consonant again and a dash. And that and that and that. And it's awful to like mimic shivering. And like mimic I'm cold and I can't really like speak right because I'm fucking cold. And I don't really have any control of most of my body. Yep. And you know, it's not great, right? Because she's just kind of there. <laughs> yep. It's so bad, y'all. And, like, you have to imagine, so they're in this tent, right? And even even with their lavish expenses, mm-hmm. there's only so big your tent can yeah. be. <laughs> so Bella is, like, dying. She yep. has hypothermia. Like, she's struggling. And Edward is mentioned to be as far away from her as he possibly can. Mm-hmm. And... 
he can't even like look at her because it's two o'clock in the morning like he's just he's losing it he's struggling so hard because he can't touch her yeah. right now he's art like he's colder than it is outside like he's it's... ice cold like he's outcast ice cold right oh, now like oh my uh, god <laughs> honestly and... the amount of times we've made outcast references during this podcast is very unexpected like it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot That's... it's a big Re- number i think <laughs> really that's... I think I've made some fresh and clean jokes. Damn. And I think that's... we've made some Outcast jokes. Honestly, that's fair. Shout out to Outcast, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, like, you know what? Fuck this podcast. I love this Outcast. This is an Outcast <laughs> podcast now. <laughs> Fuck all of you. Uh, we're not doing ourselves any favors here. Um, no, no. Yeah. So, Edward is pissed and he's struggling because mm-hmm. he's a Gemini and things are out of his control, which means <laughs> that he is not doing well and so he's I mean it's mentioned here that he's almost begging Bella and he's like what can I do and it's like yeah yeah why don't you ask the person who can barely get words out right now how can I help you this is the one time Edward this is the one time (laughs) you're gonna ask her great 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 Mm -hmm. and so now you've got Bella dying you have Jacob outside whining because he's pissed because Edward's not doing anything and Edward's like what the fuck like what and so this is the situation right and just remember this is in the movie so you have to watch this happen great 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 perfect great and of course so what ends up happening is (laughs) Edward is unamused and he's like what you want me to leave in this weather absolutely not Just go get her a space heater, Jacob. And he's like, motherfucker. (laughs) And so what ends up happening then is that Jacob is like, go fetch her a space. You mother. And uh, like, he's like, I'm not a St. Bernard. (laughs) In italics, mind you. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. And so, I'm Edward. I want to go to space. <laughs> like literally, that's Jacob. Like, <laughs> um, and so what ends up happening though is the tent starts to unzip, and of course it's Jacob, and he's a human now. And Edward's like, I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> and Jacob says, Well, you said you wanted a space heater, so here, like, here I am. And he just, like, gestures to his, like, half naked body. I am a human um, space heater. <laughs> yeah. Hello. And of course, Bella's trying to get out words, and it's like nothing, you know, because she can't, she's like struggling to stay alive right now. And we get gross dialogue from uh. Jake because this is like his wet dream, right? This like, is, it's, oh, yeah. it's just nasty because now he gets to be with Bella in front of Edward and it's just like peacocking and toxic masculinity like everywhere and we have to read it and Bella is like a like she's awake and she's like complicit but like didn't get to choose anything about that like it's gross it's like literally reading a fan fiction it's nasty I don't like it So anyway, they, like, sort of fight about it, but, of course, Edward realizes that, like, what the fuck else is he gonna do? Yeah. There's not, like, there's nothing. You win this round. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There's... So, anyway, what ends up happening is that Bella starts to warm up, of course, which Mm -hmm. means that she starts to relax, so she's not shaking anymore, (laughs) and she... My favorite thing is the first, like, real sentence that she gets out. <laughs> so she's like, Jake, can I can I ask you something? And he's like, sure, babe. What's up? Uh, and she's like, why are you so much furrier than your friends? Is Bella and high? I, like, this whole thing. <laughs> and I'm just like, Bella, why did you ask Jake why his persona is, like, that <laughs> you're just um, so furry jacob you can't just like ask people about their fursonas like oh, i know it's, my god i know it's two o'clock in the morning but like you have to have some boundaries um anyway 
he ends up saying, of course, it's because the fact that his hair is longer than everybody else's and he's kept it that way because she likes it, which totally not a serial killer thing to right. say, Jacob. And also not proven at all. She's like, I've never noticed your hair ever, actually. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. I don't, you can do whatever you want, man. I don't. That's like the last Don't let me thing. hold you back from yeah. your hair choices. <laughs> yeah, like, chase your bliss, man. Um, that's, like, the last thing that she says before she, like, finally relaxes and, like, falls asleep. Yeah. So, then we get the rest of this chapter, and it's nasty. It's a journey. So, because of the fact that she's, like, half conscious, she's, like, basically asleep, but not really. That's why we get this conversation between Ira and Jacob. That's at least how Stephanie justifies this. Yeah, she's like, this is fine. This is totally legal in terms of writing. It's fine. Yes. So... I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> this basically. Yeah. Because it's it's a conversation between these two about Bella. And I hate it. <laughs> because they're stuck in a small space with Edward being able to read Jacob's mind. But this conversation is basically Jacob being able to get some information about Edward and yeah. his thoughts for the first time because neither of them are able to leave this space Mm -hmm. for the first time and it's the worst (laughs) because it's all about like well what if this happens what would you do if Bella chooses this what would you do Mm -hmm. and I don't like that (laughs) yeah I I don't know did you have any particular thoughts about this part Coney it's all just bad right it is like yeah like they go through the whole thing where it's like oh, man, what, don't you want Belle to be human, blah, blah, blah. And then Edward goes to, like, the four possibilities this whole thing could, like, end up being, and it's just trash. So just like, well, she could just forget me. And he's like, yeah, I kind of like that one. You should just, like, keep working on that one, actually. I think it's good. Right. I think that's great. And then he also, Jacob does this shit that's like, give me, like, a year, dude. Give me, like, a set amount of time. You'd go away. And I'll just win her heart, and she'll, like, get over you, and it'll be fine, and she'll be human, and she'll, like, it'll be so good, dude. It'll be great. Just give me a year. <laughs> just give me a year. Yeah, I. it's basically just feeding the flames for both Team Edward and Team Jacob, right? Ugh. Because we find out some more information, kind of like some backstory for New Moon, right? Where yeah. Edward admits that he would have come back at the during new moon to check Mm -hmm. on her we just didn't get that of course we find out some more information about bella asking edward to stay out of the fight and that even though she feels bad about bringing that up he admits that you know she's right about that and that he'll never be able to make up for that and he owns up to that which i i mean Mm -hmm. i think that that's important yeah. And um, yeah, the four options are like gross. I don't know. Yep. Um I he goes on like it's like a page and a half of this. Like it's Yeah. He has I've, he's been thinking about this. He like takes out a notebook that he's written like here are the four ways Belle's life could end. <laughs> here, Jacob, I've been wanting someone to ask about my diary for so long. Let me just finally share it. I've really been wanting someone to read my manuscript, and I think this is the time. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, like, ableist language in this, too. Uh, Like, when, especially when Edward says, like, quote, but I'm not stupid enough to make the same mistake I made before, Jacob. I won't try to force her into that first option again. As long as she wants me, I'm here. I, this, this particular little dialogue piece, I think, is, I don't know, very telling of their personalities too because Mm. when Jacob says like if she were to decide me like what would happen and Edward says like I would let her go and he like commits to that bit and he's like well obviously Jacob like I'm not gonna kill you for that like and also and like of course he slips that in too and he's like of course like I live longer than you ha 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 like I don't know (laughs) like (laughs) and suck it nerd yeah and so it's just like they're trying to show each other in, like, this very peacocky way who's better than each other, you know? And then this part, too, kind of comes up in the the movie scene as well of Edward 
telling him how grateful he is for his presence. Um, and if they weren't natural enemies, that he might actually like him. And then when Jacob says that he, he tries to say the same thing back, and he's like, well, no. No, never mind, actually. <laughs> actually, I don't believe any of what I just said, so I'm going to take it back. Yeah. We do get some more information on the third wife, because Edward is V curious. Yes. And Jacob's like, well, why the fuck do you want that information? And he's like, oh, shit. Of course Bella would identify with that. Mm -hmm. So, that's... Maybe if somebody thought about Bella and how she feels for fucking once. Yes. Uh, Please, someone, think about Bella. Please. God. Please. We end the chapter with Edward humming Bella's lullaby, and Bella falls asleep. Therefore, the chapter ends. Mm -hmm. Thank God. (laughs) Oh, we made it. Ugh, tap out. (laughs) And the important thing is we are now past 500 pages, Ugh. and my Kindle says that we are at 77% of the way through the book. Damn, dude. Yeah. Just trucking along. Just trucking Next along. week, chapters 23, Monster, and 24, Snap Decision. I love it. We're in the late 23s, my friend. We are the soon going to be watching this movie. <laughs> We're out here. We are out here. You have a fan fiction that comes with a story, and I'm interested. I do. Before that, though, I do want to shout out our lovely Rachel. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, our, Rachel. Yes. Our lovely Rachel, who keeps us afloat, who is our solar eclipse. Rachel, please don't stare into the sun today. <laughs> you will actually become <laughs> blind. Close your eyes, Rachel. We need you and your <laughs> love and support. <laughs> do not yeah. be blinded by the sun. Yeah. <laughs> um... Yes. Rachel, we appreciate you dearly, so thank you very much. Yeah. If you if, if you want to be shouted out, you can support us on Patreon, ten dollars a month. Patreon.com such as the Twilight. Ding 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 ding. Yes. So while I click over to our fan fiction today, um, could you please describe the photo that I included on our document today? This is the worst image I've ever seen. I'm just gonna video? like <laughs> Wait, did you make this image? No 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 God okay. Jesus. No. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I've been crafting this image <laughs> all week. For, oh, I just don't even know where to begin here. <laughs> it's a screen grab of Bella and Edward from one of the movies. Can't recall which one. Twilight, obviously. Tw- okay, Twilight. Fuck. Jesus, <laughs> sorry. It's been 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is text on the bottom, but I literally could not even try to read it. Because there's like yeah. 70 layers of it. <laughs> in different fonts and different words, I think. Yep. And, uh, there's a... <laughs> I don't know how to describe this, really, Allie. <laughs> I just don't... I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so this fan fiction was sent in to me via Tumblr, um, by the user Lycanium. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate it dearly. It was sent in via the dark web, (laughs) because this is not posted online, it's actually via a Google Doc. So the title of this is Juice Me Up, very on brand, um, and it's by Leon McFrenchington. The username, I think, is Bronze Haired Girl 620. And it included the image that I sent to you. Uh The summary is, forced to work together for the summer, Bella and Edward butt heads and bond over smoothies. There's also a turkey. Oh, it's a turkey. (laughs) It's a turkey. (laughs) I'm not going to lie to you. I thought that was like a ball sack or something. Yeah, (laughs) I know. Same. But no, that makes Because then you said juice, and I'm like, well, how is this juice? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it's no and the turkey makes sense now that it makes sense i mean this image is still the worst thing my eyes have seen <laughs> now i should mention because this is a google doc um there are currently six people viewing this right now right now right now what the fuck <laughs> who else um, is a part of this fucking dark web twilight fan fiction online web community what the fuck and it looks like this was published uh, on February 22nd of 2010. Fuck. So this is from chapter one, and it looks like it's from the point of view of Bella. Okay. So, 
here we go. Hello, how are you doing today? Smoothly, I hope, he asked from across the counter. I could see the tight smile on his pale face as he greeted me, not recognizing who I was. Um, pay attention. Notice my clothing, I muttered as I pulled the horrendous t-shirt and showed it to him. Written across the front, in bright neon colors, was Jamba Juice, with my name stitched onto the sleeves. He cocked an eyebrow and tilted his head. Oh, another person just joined. You're Bella? <laughs> yeah. His face instantly dropped and relaxed. Oh, good. Edward, he greeted poorly. I furrowed my brows and crossed my arms. Thanks for the cool welcome. I shrugged past him and walked to the back room to change my t-shirt. I heard his hollow footsteps behind me. I turned to him and scowled. What do you want? I snapped. The fact that I was stuck here for the entire summer finally beginning to sink in. Do you need any help? I shot him a look. No, I replied, irritated. I don't. Thanks. He shrugged, leaning up against the wall. Are you sure? I gripped the t-shirt tightly, aggravated. Yes, I snapped again. I don't need any help. Thanks. I hoped my tone would give the indication that I didn't want to talk to him, and yet he didn't seem to get the hint. I didn't want to talk to him today, or next week, or ever. I was here to save up, and once the summer was over, I didn't have to look at another smoothie ever again. Unfortunately, I could already tell this guy was going to be a thorn in my side. I'll be out here, he told me, pointing towards the counter. I nodded, not exactly caring what he did, but instead of leaving like he said, he hovered near the doorway. What? I asked, looking around to see if there were any other employees, or if this was the only person I shared a shift with. He shrugged again, watching me fidget. Nothing. I was just standing here, he smiled, his eyes narrowing slightly. I raised an eyebrow in return. Yeah, and I can give you a medal if you want, I muttered, tightening an apron around myself. Could you? I've never won a medal before, he said, rolling his eyes. I glared at him, finally ready to begin my shift. Walking past him, I bumped into his shoulder but set myself falling forward instead of affecting him. My palms came to a soft halt against the floor, my pants being tugged by something. What the? I turned around to see Edward's hand gripping the hem of my pants. My face burned as I realized he still hadn't let go. Oh, another person just showed up. Creep! I screamed, twisting and shoving him away. I quickly stood and ran out to the, into the front area, Edward in tow behind me. Wait, I didn't mean to do that. I was trying to help you, he explained as he followed me. I don't need help, I grumbled, straightening the apron as I tried to push past him. And really, who grabs a person's pants when they're about to fall? He shrugged as if it was a completely normal thing to do. I wanted to help you, he repeated as, as if he hadn't heard his idiotic excuse the first time. Next time, just let me fall, I told him, wanting to get out of the back room as quickly as possible. Why, he asked, but I ignored him, moving so I was standing behind the counter. The store was deserted, a fact that only added to my depressed mood. Apparently, we were alone. I don't want to make friends, I told him bluntly. I'm here for the summer, and then I won't ever have to look at another smoothie again. He looked at me. You don't love being here, he said mockingly. I gripped the edge of the countertop tightly, already counting down the minutes until I was free to leave. Oh no, I do. I don't like annoying co-workers, I see, scowling at him. He scrunched up his face and turned away, walking to the other cash register. We took turns glaring at each other as the clock ticked and talked. And then there was a gobble. Gobble, gobble. And scene. Wow. I know. <laughs> I can't believe there are seven people reading this at the same time you are. And there's like seven chapters. Who the fuck? What? What? I know. I hate I know. this. <laughs> I hate this so much. Ugh. As we say in Forks. Get bit. Gobble, gobble. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, hi there. Guess you stole Cody's mic and took over the end credits. This is an Earbud Media production. You can pitch a show at bit.ly slash earbud pitch. You can check out the network's Twitter at Earbud Media. And while you're doing that, why don't you follow us everywhere at Into the Twilight? Why don't you just go ahead and check out our Patreon? It's patreon.com slash into the twilight. Just as little as a dollar a month, you can get some cool things like pins and books help us do cool things like live streams you can always help us out for free with reading and reviewing us on apple podcast our amazing artwork was done by maddie padilla who you can find at your ghost host 44 our fantastic music was done by eli kraus who you can find at krausfilms.com the intro and outro of our podcast is done by KB Smith, who you can find at KB underscore Smith. You can find Cody everywhere online at Cody Captures, and you can find me now everywhere at 
out into wild places. You stayed until the end. Check you out. Good job. And we will check back with you next week. Bye. You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Hey, Dan. Hey, what's up, John? I just wanted to uh, confirm that we were recording Monday. Yes. Uh, what are we recording for? Oh, it's our new podcast. Our podcast. The the, the Strange Little People one, Strange right? Little People, yeah. Yeah, the one on Earbud Media Productions. Mm-hmm. You can uh, find it on YouTube. You can, can listen to it. The one that we update every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, dude. When we have new guests all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah, and we talk about current events and stuff. People should listen to it, right? Uh, yeah. It's, it's I, really cool. I think people would like it. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but I, mean, I hope you would. Did you put out the ad yet? The uh, flyers? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm doing it right now, as we speak. No, you're sitting down. You're no, not... no, th- this is happening right now, as we speak. John, why did my hand just go through you? Oh my god. John. We'll talk about it next week. <laughs> <laughs>